Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christie Reisinger, and today we're going to talk about hair loss associated with COVID-19. Alopecia is the fancy medical term for hair loss. There are different kinds and patterns of hair loss. The main type of hair loss that's been seen in patients after a COVID-19 infection is called telogen effluvium, which means generalized hair loss. So there are no bald spots, just an overall thinning of the hair. And this type of hair loss can really be seen with any stressful physical or psychological event. In fact, any illness that causes a high fever is enough to cause telogen effluvium. This type of hair loss can be seen even after the flu. Another type of hair loss that's also been known to occur is called alopecia areata. This is considered a type of autoimmune hair loss and stress is known to aggravate or unmask autoimmune illnesses like alopecia areata. Alopecia areata is a recurrent non-scarring type of autoimmune hair loss that affects about 2% of the population. One dermatology clinic in Turkey published an observation in May 2020 compared with May 2019 before the pandemic and said that the diagnosis of alopecia areata had increased by 50%, likely due to the stress of closures and self-quarantines during the pandemic. But most hair loss from COVID-19 has caused by telogen effluvium, or TE, and this can be seen with any stressful event. So how often does hair loss occur after a COVID infection? One study published in September 2020 followed 538 COVID survivors in Wuhan, China, and found that about 30% of them had some form of alopecia three months or more after their initial infection. Of those, most of them were women. Another study based in Michigan studied over 1,700 patients discharged after hospitalization for COVID. 20% of these patients complained of hair loss three to six months after their illness began. But the common denominator in each of these patients was a severe COVID infection that required hospitalization. But even if the COVID-19 infection was not severe, hair loss can be seen to the mental stress and overall physical stress associated with the infection. Why does it occur? Let's look at a graph about hair growth to understand this a bit more. Hair moves through four different stages, antigen, catagen, telogen, and exogen. Normally, every hair on your head is in a different stage of the cycle, and we lose about 50 to 100 hairs a day. During a stressful event or illness, for some reason the body moves many, many more hairs into the telogen phase all at one time, which means that two to four months after moving into that phase, those hairs will fall out. So imagine you had COVID-19 in January, and because of the stress to your body during that illness, many hairs are pushed to the telogen phase. So that means two to four months later, or in March, April, or May, these hairs will be lost all at the same time. But what is reassuring is that this process in a healthy person is constantly starting over after the hair is lost by returning to the antigen or active phase with a new hair formed and growing about one centimeter or slightly less than a half an inch every 28 days. Hair can stay in this active phase for two to six years. There doesn't seem to be something specific to COVID-19 that causes the rapid push for hair to move to the telogen phase. And it seems like it doesn't matter if you've been vaccinated or not, or how severe your COVID-19 illness is. Telogen effluvium hair loss can occur to anyone. And part of the hair loss we've seen may not be specifically because you had COVID-19, but simply the stress of losing your job, losing a loved one, or living in isolation these all can cause telogen effluvium, or TE. Are there any treatments for hair loss? Well, it really depends on the type of hair loss that's occurred. With the most common type of hair loss after a COVID infection, telogen effluvium, it is reversible and expected to improve without any treatment over two to three months. But it is important that your doctor check a few simple labs to ensure there's not a correctable issue that's occurring. Things like thyroid disease, adrenal insufficiency, protein malnutrition, and hormone problems, especially an elevated testosterone level in women, can contribute to hair loss, so these should be checked. But most of the time, in my experience, the labs are all normal. And remember that scalp hair growth is slow, usually about one centimeter or not even half an inch per month. 
So I want to warn anyone out there against scams and products that claim to restore hair loss with vitamins or topical products. Most of the time what's needed is simply the treatment of time. If you have ongoing concerns about your hair loss or want to have a medical professional discuss hair loss with you, go see a dermatologist, preferably one that specializes in hair loss. There are other kinds of hair loss and each kind has a different possible treatment. But as I mentioned before, most of the time after an acute illness or stressful event, expect to lose hair about two to three months after the event. But with time and without any treatment, the hair should start growing back on its own. Thanks for joining me.